So the kid got into the sewers through a drainage channel? Yeah, he says the channel is super tight, but there's some kind of shutter next to it. Got it. That must be where they dumped the waste. There's something else. It sounds like a Desperado exec was on site yesterday. If a Sentry Cyborg was on hand for the meeting... You should be able to review their video log, provided you can find a server access terminal. That would give us the evidence we need, as well as a little peek at the level of that technology. So what about the kid? I made sure the area was secure and told him to sit tight. Can you pick him up? Sure. I'll send a couple agents for him. You just focus on getting into that lab. If what he said is true about the organs, we need to hurry. Agreed. Riding out. Boris, we've got kids being held inside this lab. I'm getting them out of there. Copy that. I will discuss with NGO what to do with them afterward. What are you thinking? Uh, well, this is difficult. I imagine these are homeless children, taken from streets. Likely they have no home to return to, but we cannot dump them back on streets. We could look for adoptions in the U.S., but some of these kids may be criminals. Could be drug addicts, HIV positive, not so easy to find homes. Yeah, wasn't easy for me either. The guys at the relief center were always worried I'd cause problems for my foster family. The alternative is putting them in an institution until they grow up, but this has issues as well. Most are already past capacity. Taking on this many street kids at one time would be impossible. Also, it's a matter of fairness. Is it fair to take in these kids here when millions more are dying? I imagine this is why rescue was not part of our contracted mission. The human rights NGOs, they know they can't rescue them all. They must take a wide view and confront the problem of traffickers, not their victims. Well, we can't just sit here and let them pull kids to pieces. Duh. On this, we agree. For now, rescue the children. We'll worry about the fallout later. Copy that. Raiden, I said earlier this is an infiltration mission. But if it comes to combat when rescuing the children, so be it. If enemy cyborgs attack, you are free to respond with all available force. I figured. Attacking first, eh, that would be a gray area, legally speaking. But I doubt anyone would take us to court over it. Yeah, I doubt it too. Just keep your hands off all non-combatants. That would violate international law, not to mention morals of company. I hear you. That kid said he's from Guyana. That's on the Caribbean side of South America, right? Know anything about it? A little. Though I'm more of an expert on Africa than the Americas. To be exact, Guyana's sandwiched between Venezuela and Suriname, with Brazil on its southern border. Of course, the Venezuelan border is sheer rainforest. There aren't even any roads through it. You have to cross the Guyana Shield to get to Brazil, too. So it's pretty isolated from the rest of the continent. Most inland connections run through Suriname, opposite of Venezuela. Beyond Suriname is French Guyana. The three countries are referred to as the Guyanas, and the entire region's got its own unique culture sphere. The Guyanas? I've heard the name, but I don't really know it at all. <laughs> Same here. I do know the region's a lot smaller than Brazil, or even Venezuela for that matter. As you know, most South American countries have Spanish as their official language. Brazil uses Portuguese. Guyana, though, uses English. Suriname uses Dutch, and French Guyana uses French, naturally. A kind of divide-and-conquer approach to colonialism, huh? Yeah. They're all independent now except French Guyana, though. Sort of like what you see in Africa. I did some research after you met George. Culturally, at least, Guyana's more Caribbean than South American. Yeah? He looked a little Asian to me. There's a lot of immigrants from India living there. They were both British colonies, after all. It's a lot more influence from the UK than India, though. I mean, look at George's name, after all. An English-speaking South American of Indian background. <laughs> Everything good over there, Raiden? You, uh, don't seem like you're in much of a hurry. Give me some time. I've got a lot of intel to gather. Speaking of which, I'd better get going. Riding out. Those brains are from the street kids they picked up in Central and South America, right? Abducted by traffickers and sold to Desperado. Right. And now it looks like they're selling off their organs. That part of the world's full of homeless kids. True. 
Though really just about every nation's full of them. Except the richest ones, that is. You see a lot of them across the African and Asian continents, too. Estimates put the worldwide number of homeless children at anywhere from tens to hundreds of millions. Kind of a broad range. I guess it's hard to do solid research in the kinds of places where you'd find them. True enough. The way the Human Rights NGO put it, though, it's hard to define what a street child is. There's lots of different types. Some are on the street because they ran away from home, but really they can return any time. Some work on the street but go home at night. And some kids literally live on the street with no family. Go home at night? Those kids still count as street children? Well, the point is that there's no set definition. Everyone involved has their own take on the issue. Without a clear definition, estimates inevitably end up all over the map. Makes sense. If you're going to talk about street kids, though, I think you need to differentiate. There are the kids who live on the street and the ones that just work it. Little things can make a huge difference if you've got a home and a family to fall back on. Even if you're just running a fruit stand or shoe shine operation. Kind of presumptuous for me to say which is better, I guess, but you can't just ignore that aspect. Yeah. It's hard to imagine how helpless you feel when you've got no one to fall back on. Yeah. Opinions similarly divided on the child labor issue, too. Some say all underage labor should be banned. Others think the decision should be left up to the family. I mean, sure, kids shouldn't be exploited or pressed into military service. If nothing else, the right to an education's got to be protected. But should a kid be banned from helping out at his dad's store? What if a family's so desperate that it would starve without the money their children bring in? Yeah, it's definitely not cut and dry. I can't believe what they're doing in there. Guess I shouldn't be so surprised, huh? Guess not. Are you gonna help them? No other choice. I'll try to help look for some place that might take them in. Thanks. Least I can do. Did you want to save your data? All right. Raiden. Good luck out there. By the way, I didn't know you spoke Spanish. I've got the U.S. Army to thank for that. I was in a group called Foxhound, although it doesn't exist on paper. We were isolated from the other soldiers. Day after day of VR training. I heard about that. It's not like it was all VR, though. Special Forces guys need advanced physical and communication skills. I had to do all the basic training and language schoolwork, too. We even trained in the Afghan village set up at Fort Polk. The Afghan village? They built a mock urban area on a base in Louisiana for training purposes. It was a hell of a lot more realistic than the VR training we had back then. Nothing compared to cyborg training, though. Having it jacked right in like that. They say it's so realistic now, you can feel your blade cutting through flesh. You know much about Guyana, Courtney? Not really. I know the name, but don't ask me anything about what it's like. You mean you haven't even tried the food? Nope. No research trips this time. Besides, who knew we'd be running into any Guyanese here? I'm looking now, though. Looks like a lot of their diet is seafood. It's a small coastal nation, so it's probably easy to get fresh fish across the whole country. A lot of their dishes use Indian spices. That's where a lot of their immigrants come from. Fish with curry, huh? Sounds tasty. But, uh, maybe you could finish reading all about the food there after the mission. Huh? Oh, it, it just, you know, came up while I was reading up on Guyana in general. Right, right. Well, let me know if you find anything actually useful. It just popped up in the search results, I swear! Very well done, Raiden. Oh, uh, thanks, I guess. That raptor may have been smaller than an Irving, but its potential is simply remarkable. Defeating it is a fine demonstration of your body's abilities. I'm quite happy to see it working so well. Well, thanks, Doc. I'm quite happy I'm not dead, too. How did it feel to fight it? Well, an Irving has more strength and firepower. But this guy was a lot harder to keep a beat on. Not that big of a deal, but you definitely don't want to let your guard down around one. Indeed. A combination Irving and Tripod Force would be a formidable foe in any urban warfare scenario. The only problem is cost. 
A PMC would have to be well-funded indeed to even think about acquiring the necessary numbers to make it work. There are situations where an Irving may be overkill, but tripods cannot provide the necessary force. So the Raptor was built to fill that gap? Indeed. Its basic design is a streamlined, more compact version of the Irving. Furthermore, it uses the same control system as the tripods, which helps keep costs low. It can use standard personnel weaponry as is, and its armor has been componentized. This is to say, the user can expand its defensive capability as needed. It's fit for standard military operations, anti-terror missions, even regular patrol and police duty. A most admirable check of all trades. <laughs> Adorable too, wouldn't you say? Uh, not the first word that comes to mind. Ah yes, my apologies. I can't help but marvel at a well-made machine when I see one. There's no need to be jealous, though. Your body is still quite impressive as well. Yeah, uh, thanks, Doc. How is Wolf faring? Hard to say just yet. Seems like he's doing okay. Good, good. I'm so pleased my repairs were effective. He seems happy enough, but I don't know. Can a machine really be happy? Maybe he's just being directed by his programming to behave that way. And what is wrong with that? If something you do for someone else is appreciated, it makes you happy. It's a perfectly normal reaction, one that applies whether you're man or machine, and whether or not you have intelligence. I guess so. When you watch a film, does it not make you happy when good things happen to the heroes in the end? I'm not seeing the connection. Well, those heroes are not really happy. They're just following a script written by someone else. The actors have human intelligence, but the characters themselves do not. It is a facade, an imitation. And yet we still feel an emotional connection. It does not matter that it is make-believe. <sighs> now, I certainly don't know whether the AI you encountered in the past was neural or not. But Wolf most certainly is. And with a neuro AI, it is not so simple as working off a set computer program. You can define intelligence however you like, but personally, I see no reason not to say Wolf has it. It possesses a neuro AI structurally similar to the human brain. It has learned enough of the world around it to be capable of human speech. Truly, an astounding artificial intelligence is at work here. One I suspect could make for substantial business opportunities given the chance. Think of the possibilities, Raiden. What do you think a truly intelligent AI could do for the world? I'll let you know if I think of anything. Raiden out. Doc, I'm seeing Desperado cyborgs explode here after I take them down. Hmm, for security purposes, I would imagine. Cyborgs often use classified tech from suppliers who take great pains to maintain their trade secrets. <laughs> Most likely, these models have a self-destruct failsafe that triggers once they cannot defend themselves. So they die even though their brains could be transferred to a new body? I understand your concern, Raiden. But I'm sure these conditions were clearly stated in their contracts. This is one area that is well regulated by the law. PMCs must inform their workers of such things. These men knew the danger when they signed up. No doubt they were compensated for the additional risk. Uh, right. You should be more concerned with the potential for data loss in these explosions. They could damage or even erase the holographic memory in their left hands. Though to think on it, the data is most likely automatically wiped before detonation. Just in case it would survive the explosion and resulting shockwave, you know. Yeah. Sure, Doc. You must remove the hands before the critical system shutdown sequence can activate. Remember it this way. Before you kill, make certain no cyborg is left with a left hand. 